No integrity. That's all it takes. Well, sir. Well, sir. $854,000. Now you know why we have a lot of feds. In the uh, criminal cases that you guys are working on, um, are there any statute of limitations in the crimes that you're that they're being committed? Depending on the crime, there are statutes of limitations that you know you'd be outside the scope. But it actually, what so you, so you did the crime, did the hack, at, say in the 90s, and we didn't find out about it. it actually, the clock starts ticking when we discover it and start working the case. So it depends. So as long as you're working on the case, it's it's a. It's but there there are statute of limitations depending on what the violation is. If you don't, what you're actually going to charge with. If you don't gather enough evidence to complete it, it you, you can talk to me later afterwards, and I'll be happy. To That's an interesting that. question. Do you have a specific date? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Nothing. Nothing specific. You want to cut through the bullshit and just confess right here? <laughs> You guys talked about uh, working groups between agencies and, and sharing information. Um, what about um, what opportunities are there with private sector and working with law enforcement as private sector are exposed to the same threats oftentimes and they might have visibility that could benefit law enforcement and then law enforcement could also provide information to the private sector to help protect their networks. There seems to be a little bit of a um, information gap in some of the sharing that goes on between those two. There is, but we're working on it. So what we do every day uh, is, is work with state and local law enforcement and in some cases federal law enforcement. Uh, part of our job, we, we have the ability to kind of wear the government hat and the private sector hat because we're a nonprofit. Uh, so we work real closely with people like Cisco and Symantec and Mantec and, and uh, McAfee and, and on and on and on. And, and we do just exactly what you're asking about. We bring those experts from those entities to the table with law enforcement experts and uh, identify from both sides the gaps as best we can. Do you also and work with private companies other than the commercial absolutely. security? We do, yes, we do. Uh, I, th I think all, often. The, all the panelists up here, we actually have tight relationship with private companies, you know, not just infrastructures, not the big companies, stuff like that, because that's the only way you find out what's going on out on the net is actually building those uh, relationships yeah. and uh, speed of trust. It's in, commonly done. Yeah. In the Department of Defense, we have a pilot program where we're actually sharing with a critical infrastructure, the, the cleared contractors, the defense industrial base, classified threat information, uh, to protect their their network, so we are sharing classified information uh, in, in this particular pilot program. Is there an opportunity for private industry to become classified or not non-contractors to be able to obtain that threat information under some sort of vetted community? That's a policy question. You should hold for DHS in the second panel. That'd be perfect. I'll just shift gears a little bit. On the Internet Gaming Enforcement Act, there's a lot of the servers that are affected by that are overseas, and I was curious about your approach to enforcement on overseas gaming resources. And second, the follow-up to that, are you going to come after my PokerStars bankroll? Yeah, we'll seize that. that. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to seize that. Um, now, are you, talking, are you talking like online gaming? Yeah, you know, the, online like, gaming, the online gaming act that, that is in Congress. Right. The, the, the one thing with online gaming is obviously it's a, very, it's a challenged one to enforce and two, because where the servers are, you know, around the world or, uh, you know, protection. So that, that actually uh, there has been some looks at, uh, looking at it. The department's looked at it. But it's, it, it is a challenge. I mean, we're, that's, that's a hard one to enforce. Is it a, just a jurisdiction challenge or is it a... A challenge that they're just they're sovereign countries. Across well, I think it's more world. jurisdiction and sovereign countries because that that uh, that creates the problem where your servers are overseas. Great, thank you. Yeah. Uh, do you guys know who the video professor is? <laughs> the free um, trials. I only recently discovered that if you get the free trial because my grandparents asked me about this and um, 
after 10 days of getting, after you get the CD, if you don't send it back, they're going to charge your credit card $200, and that's obviously a scam, but the small print is on the website. So what do you guys, if anything, can you do about shady, gray area, stuff like that? Well, uh, he, he's working for us out of Area 51. <laughs> Actually, in that uh, gray area, the, the FTC, Federal Trade Commission, has some uh, authorities and powers to address. That, that's where I would uh, suggest you direct the complaint. In those gray areas where there's no clear violation of law? And actually with your state attorney general's office? Seriously, with that, bring it up, because the, the, the state might have problems with that more than the federal government. Right. Right. Thanks. So, uh, this one's for my northern brother on the end here. Um, you said you were a developer? Yes. yes okay. Um, and no offense to you, I was just wondering why didn't the RCMP or CSIS send an investigator? Why did they send a developer? They're standing in line behind you. Pardon me? They're standing in line behind you. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, well, part of the reason I'm here is actually to, to attend some of the conferences and learn a lot. So I guess they thought maybe I would be able to take away a, a significant portion from that, I hope. So you got the short straw. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> That's cool. From a law enforcement standpoint, uh, it's come out in several reports that the majority of the uh, hosting services that have spam and other malicious activities taking place actually exist in the United States. Uh, much of these activities are somewhat illegal and detrimental to our overall security and well-being. What, if anything, is law enforcement able to do or doing to assist in shutting down uh, many of these hosting services that have these uh, spam and other malicious activities taking place? Well, actually, we've uh, realized some success working with uh, the FBI, Secret Service. Uh, how many people have heard of Macolo? Um, Macolo actually was taken offline by their upstream providers because there was just a storm of complaints for such a period of time. Uh, ultimately, we got a search warrant, which totally brought down their systems, a review of the data, realized, uh, revealed the fact that they were uh, opening up other uh, bulletproof hosts. Uh, I mentioned the FTC. Uh, as you might imagine, a lot of the criminal element that's using these, these uh, uh, rogue ISPs, they're operating them are overseas. And we may not have a multilateral assistance treaty or any type of treaty for extradition. Uh, so in, in that particular instance on 3FN, Pricewort, uh, the other bulletproof host, quote unquote, we partnered with the FTC and they have authorities for seizure. Uh, when it's clear, uh, we provided evidence as long as, uh, along with other uh, IT security researchers, University of Alabama, Spam House, etc. A lot of people, that the community really worked in this instance. They provided enough evidence for the FTC to go under their authorities of forfeiture apply for that and the judge uh, ruled in the favor so basically shut shut their entire ISP down uh, and they also have a, a one million dollar fine on top of that so in this particular instance we extracted some pain from the people providing the rest of us pain it's not the perfect solution particularly for the law enforcement folks we want to see people in cuffs but it's better than nothing okay and going to an earlier comment you made about the Mariposa botnet uh, takedown uh, it sounded like you said it was a legal thing, but was it not actually led by a commercial entity to actually take down the botnet itself and then followed up by other legal action? And now applying that standard to other botnets around the world, are we, are we going to have to look at commercial entities going after these things rather than actual law enforcement uh, rendering some type of service to uh, take these botnets down? I, I think to answer your question, it's more that, uh, yeah, we're going to have to work uh, it's a bigger problem. It's not just the law enforcement or feds and raid jackets coming out. It's going to be a community um, working together to bring down these things. Given Let, let me just quickly follow up on that. I'm aware of three cases just in California where there might be some people in this room that helped out on them. But <laughs> I would expect there probably is. But, but uh, it was a true partnership between people in the industry. Um, basically collecting the evidence uh, and handing it off to the right people and it was the FBI and FTC and and uh, in one one case uh, they chased uh, a bad guy through uh, three ISPs finally completely got him shut down but uh, a lot of 
the bulk of that work was done by by people in the industry. Uh, so the great partnership. Law enforcement, certainly at the state and local level, don't have the capacity uh, to impact that kind of problem. I mean, that's truly just uh, if the FBI and U.S. Secret Service, uh, some other federal agencies weren't there, it wouldn't get impacted at all. Given that there's been a modicum of success in prosecuting cyber criminals, the big ones, and that the uh, cyber crime is not taken as seriously, not as sensational as, say, a bank robbery in person, and that the uh, district attorneys are forced to use archaic laws in establishing jur jurisdiction and account access. Do you see a point in time where the cyber laws, both in this country and internationally, catch up with the cyber, cr the cyber crime as it happens? I certainly hope so. <laughs> so it, it may be coming from another direction, so that the Department of Justice just uh, three weeks ago announced the formation of uh, a number of intellectual property task forces around the country. So uh, some of that's driven by cyber and some of it's not. Uh, but that product uh, that, that has a nexus to cyber is uh, probably going to get impacted by those task forces. Uh, I see hope on the horizon just because it's on the it's on the president's uh, agenda, uh, you know, in the top five probably. To address your question a little bit differently, I spent a lot of time in the 90s, uh, in earlier, working to develop all the cyber laws we have now with the Department of Justice and a lot of people like me did. In the United States, we have very robust laws. Ironically, some of the uh, civil liberties built into our cyber laws are stronger than those that are built into our corporeal space laws that existed before cyberspace. The issue for all of us that work in this field and worked in this field is these cases are international in nature and we're slammed 18 hours a day working them. The operational tempo is very large. Mm -hmm. And so when you work with nations overseas that either don't have these laws, don't care, uh, or have ethics issues with their, their good governance issues, uh, you combine all those issues, since these cases are international in nature, it becomes more difficult. It doesn't become a U.S. legal issue to resolve them. You have to work through these international issues. You've got to keep in mind, overt acts taken on the part of anybody, not just a nation state, can constitute an act of war in cyberspace. So um, we're, good, we're in good shape in the U.S., but in other countries it's not quite that way. Okay, thank you. Well, I'm going to follow up on that. Um, dirty little secret is that the number one cyber crime in the world it has nothing to do with intrusions. You know, it's child pornography. And so the limited resources that uh, federal, state, and local law enforcement have, a great deal of those resources are put to uh, 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 the predators that are preying on children. And unfortunately, in a lot of cases, especially at the state and local level, intrusions aren't looked at. It's a matter of resources. Uh, what are the panel's views on the U.S. government's desire or capability to shut down the Internet in the, in the event of a cyber attack? I think there are two bills currently in the Congress that are being considered. That's it? That's it. How it's fortunate. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. The question I've got is, who's the lead federal agency for a large-scale cyber attack? You know, who would take uh, command and control during a large-scale cyber attack, such as something against uh, critical infrastructure, more than one area? So, just example, healthcare, transportation, et cetera, et cetera. Probably the FBI. So, I mean, it, really it, it, it depends on how it comes in. I mean, if you have, like, when I, when I was at NASA, we had 24-hour-a-day surveillance of our networks, and sometimes we were the major victim. If we were the major victim, we would have the lead in the matter because we had the corporate knowledge, we had the infrastructure and the resources in the area. But as we're watching attacks come across the line, often we'd see the Department <coughs> of Agriculture or the Department of Commerce or IBM as a victim. We don't have jurisdiction to, invest, to investigate uh, incidents in those departments. We either have to refer to the matter to those departments if they have cyber investigative resources or not. The FBI has jurisdiction across the government and they could go in and handle an issue, for example, in one of these other departments that we don't have jurisdiction in. So in a situation like uh, a Titan Rain, re you know, redo, 
uh, in other words, you know, a ta 